Most of the time, when turning to one side or the other, you need to be in the available lane closest to that side. So if I want to turn left here, I need to be in the left lane. However, there are some places where you're allowed to turn from more than one lane. If that's the case, you'll usually have a panel like this one indicating it, and sometimes some arrows painted on the asphalt too. This panel and the corresponding arrows on the asphalt indicate what you can do in each lane. In the left lane, you can only turn left, and in the second lane from the left, you can either turn left or go straight. So I'll be turning left from this lane. You'll sometimes also see a line like this one. Now this is the same intersection seen from a top view. Usually when turning, you'd have to go from your lane on this side of the intersection to the same lane on the other side. From first to first, second to second, and so on. But here, this line is guiding you from the second lane into the third lane. So why a line like this? Because sometimes vehicles might overflow into the other lane, especially the wider ones, like buses or trucks. So if you see a line like this one, make sure that you go into the lane where it guides you. Also, if you have an arrow like this one on the traffic light, which means you can only go straight, make sure that you wait for the appropriate light to turn. And here, because the vehicle to my left is large and has a trailer on top of that, you can see an example of what I meant. At some intersections, you'll have a priority light for turning left. When big vehicles like trucks, buses and so on are turning left at that kind of light, they will hide it from you. Like here, the light might have turned yellow or red while that truck is still in front of it. So make sure that you see the light before entering the intersection. That works for any vehicle that is bigger than normal. In the previous cases, you might have noticed that the light to turn left was at medium height. In some cases though, it might be higher, but higher vehicles will hide it anyway. So make sure that you always see it before entering the intersection. In places where you're allowed to advance in the intersection while waiting to turn left at a green light, try to advance in a straight line as much as possible so that you don't block the lane on the opposite side when doing so. Like in this case, the vehicle in front in the opposite direction is waiting for the pickup in front of me to turn, so we advance to try to see something. The problem now is that the pickup already turned, but he can't turn yet, so he's blocking me. So try to keep the car straight while waiting. Also, if there is already a vehicle in the intersection, I recommend you wait behind the stop line until that vehicle has freed the intersection before advancing. Also remember, if the light turns yellow when you're behind the stop line and you have enough time to stop safely, you have to stop. But if you're already inside the intersection when the light turns yellow or even red, you're allowed to finish your turn, but make sure it's safe to do so. So check all around before you do. If you have a lane reserved for turning left, you don't need to advance since you'll have a priority light eventually. Also make sure that the lane you want to go into is not occupied before entering the intersection. For example, if there are vehicles stopped here for some reason, wait behind the line. A problem a lot of students have when turning left on a street that has a median is that they turn too close to the median, almost hitting it. The biggest reason for that is because they're scared of hitting it, they stare at it. And you know that if you stare at something when you drive, you'll have a tendency to go towards it. So don't look at the median, look at where you want to go. In other words, don't look at the problem, look at the solution. Also turn your steering wheel just a bit as you're approaching the lane you want to go into and turn it more sharply just a bit before you enter the lane. In other words, do your turn more in the shape of an L than in the shape of a quarter circle. By turning the wheel sooner or doing the turn in the shape of a quarter circle, you approach the median at the wrong angle. By turning the wheel a bit later or doing the turn more in the shape of an L, you're positioning yourself straighter before entering the lane, which will make it easier. How late you'll turn the wheel will depend on how wide the intersection is. The wider the intersection, the later you'll turn the wheel. Now, I won't give any reference points here because these will vary a lot depending on a lot of things, like the width of the street, the size of your vehicle, your position as you approach the turn, and so on. And anyways, you shouldn't be looking at reference points, but at where you want to go. But remember, Look at the lane you want to go into and not at the median, turn the wheel slightly as you approach the lane and turn it more sharply just before entering it. If you live in a big city like I do, in a lot of the busiest streets, you're not allowed to turn left, sometimes at all times, sometimes only during a certain period. So you'll see a panel like this or like this. The thing is, if you couldn't turn at the last intersection and you also can't turn at this one, there's a very good chance that you won't be able to do it anytime soon. So instead of waiting and hoping for an intersection where you'll be able to do it, the best option is to do the square as I call it, meaning turn right at the nearest street where you can do so and keep turning right whenever possible to go back to the street where you want to go. I hope you liked this video, thanks for watching.